Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 21st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today with a good reminder from Xavier to watch your DNS logs. I always keep saying it's probably one of the most useful logs to watch if you have to pick one. And in this case, again, it's about very large, very long DNS queries that are often used and indicative of covert channels. Xavier uses a little bit of different trick than what I usually do. He uses the base32 command in order to encode the data. I usually just use XXD. The result is similar. Base32 is probably actually a little bit more efficient. And apparently the W3C, the organization that is behind many web standards, is considering making ambient light sensors in devices accessible via JavaScript. Ambient light sensors are typically used to dim or brighten displays in order to adjust them with the surrounding. In some more modern fancy devices, they also adjust the color temperature to the temperature of the light in the room. Now, with this JavaScript extension, JavaScript would have access to the sensor and with that, of course, would learn more about the environment the phone or the computer is used in, which has some privacy implications. Now, this standard is far from finalized yet, so not exactly clear what like, for example, the update frequency is or the granularity of the readout. But in a proof of concept demo, a researcher was able to, for example, read QR codes and other data displayed on the screen, including, for example, to identify popular websites. Now, based on the demo, it's my impression this was sort of a best case. So likely the details won't be as granular as in this demo. But overall, of course, it could certainly leak information about the user. Personally, I could see some form of covert channel where you have some device in the room that changes lighting conditions and then the ambient light sensor on another device is picking up these changes and reporting them back. At this point, Firefox and Chrome are shipping with this feature, but in Chrome, it's turned off by default. You have to specifically enable it. In Firefox, it's enabled by default and also does not require user permission in order to report back these ambient light sensor settings. And while we're talking about Chrome and Firefox, both browsers also released new versions that do fix a number of security vulnerabilities. And the other ISC, the Internet Systems Consortium or ISC.org, the company behind the popular name server Bind, released a new version of Bind 9.11.1. While there aren't really any great significant fixes in this version, there's one important part and uh, that is the new root signing key. The new key will become effective October 11th, so ISC is thinking ahead here by including this key in this latest version of Bind. You should add this key unless you already enabled managed keys or DNS validation auto, in which case the key should be updated automatically. According to the release notes, the bind.keys file, which does include these keys, should be available separately, but at this point, it has not been made public yet. During this year's RSA conference, I mentioned during our panel that we had there that random numbers is sort of one of those critical issues, in particular for Internet of Things style devices, virtualization and the like. Now, Whitewood Security, a company that in the past was more known for making these relatively high-end, but also somewhat expensive uh, random number generators that you can plug into servers, came up with a new concept. They're essentially providing entropy as a service. It's software you're installing on your system that will connect 
to Whitewood's servers to pull down entropy. Sounds like an interesting concept. Of course, not entirely new. Random.org and a couple other systems like that have provided services like this in the past. But in this case, it's nicely integrated with Def Random. So you don't really need to rewrite your software. You just get more entropy into the existing random number generators. It's in beta right now. It's a little bit picky from my own experiments in how, uh, what operating systems it exactly supports. They offer a Debian package as well as an RPM, but in particular the RPM, for example, doesn't work out of the box on CentOS 6. You need at least seven in order for it to work. Of course, I would like to hear what you think about this and how it worked for you. Well, uh, that's it for today. Remember, webcast today at 1 p.m. Eastern about the security of NoSQL databases and the ecosystem around that. Thanks for listening and please share links to this podcast with your friends and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.